Hello everyone, this is Dawn with TwiceYourCheap.com and today we're going to do some photo, we're going to do a live photo edit for you. So this is a photo that I found in one of my files that was from um, my cotton collection that I did a couple of years ago for my recycled yarn. And this was a raw photo. I had a hard time finding raw photos from, from previously because I've edited them all and I didn't keep both copies. So this one's a raw photo and it was intended to be a Instagram photo. So this was going to be a flat lay and I had laid them out. So I've got my triangle right here and I've got my parallel lines and I'm repeating things. So this was going to be something, but it's really not a great photo and it was feeling very uninspiring to me. So we're going to see what we can do about this. The first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and crop it. So right here, this kind of double square image right here. This is our crop tool. And I'm going to crop it. Up here at the top, I can constrain my proportions if I want. I want this to be square, so I want it to be one by one. Now that one by one. Now that doesn't mean it's one inch by one inch. It's just proportions. You can type in any numbers that you want it to be here. So if you have a specific number of pixels or something that you have for a Facebook um, cover image or for a website cover image or an Etsy photo, you can type the, the exact specifications that, that that website tells you in here and it will be the perfect proportions. Or you can click this drop down button and it will give you some options on what they would what they suggest and in fact if you have a special size that you use a lot you can create your own preset and then you can just find that in your drop down menu and it will be easy easy peasy so we're going to do square i'm going to go ahead and line this up as best as i can for now um, it doesn't have to be perfect for what i'm doing here So I'll go ahead and crop it. And I'm gonna zoom in. I'm gonna press the Control Plus button to zoom in, but you can also come up here to View and zoom in, zoom out, and it will tell you what the shortcuts are over here. All right, now the next thing that I can see that we have issues with this photograph is it's really dark. So we're gonna come up here to Image, adjustments and this is usually the first thing that I do when adjusting a, a photo is to come to the levels and the levels shows you this nice histogram and what essentially what this is telling you is where the colors are so down here are your darks your black is at the very bottom and your white is up here and we want to move our right little arrow thing over here to the edge of the mountain. And that's pretty much telling Photoshop, this is where the whites start. Now this little line over here, you know, yes, there are whites that are in there. We're gonna ignore those, you know, and be sure to look at your preview and we're like, okay, well, we're gonna adjust that a little bit so that, cause it's getting kind of blown out right here. I may adjust that down a little bit to where I like how my yarn looks. We're not worried about our background yet. We're looking at how we like our yarn. I think I want my yarn. The middle adjusts how everything is either a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. So I think I'm gonna adjust everything just a little bit lighter. There we go. That looks much better. If we want to, we can come up to the history and we can take a look at how it looked when we opened it and what it looks like now. That looks pretty good. That made a huge difference already. Okay. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to our image adjustments and I want to play with the highlights and the shadows, which are down here. And as soon as I opened that menu, it immediately made a change. So if you click this little preview box down here, it'll show you, you know, it immediately made a change. 
And what it did, I'm going to click show more options so I can see all my things. What it did, if you look, is it took out a lot of these shadows down here and it made this blue much, much lighter. And this is a much prettier image. I don't know if that blue is actually accurate to how it looks though. So we're going to take our shadows because that's pretty much what it took out with shadows. And we're going to play with this dial to see if we can get that back closer to what it's supposed to be. The darker the shadows and the brighter the whites are, the more contrast you're going to have in your image. So let's take a look again. So that's how it was before. And this is with my little bit of adjustments. I think we'll take those shadows down just a touch more. Here we go. Okay, now we're going to play with our highlights. And our highlight is this white spot right here, the shine on this light colored yarn. And notice if I pull that way up, woo, we get all sorts of funkiness going on. So if we pull down our highlights, hmm, I think I actually like it better all the way over here. And our color. All right, I think that looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and click OK. So we like that image. That looks pretty good. I kind of like that. Now we're going to deal with this white background, which is not particularly white. And a at least a mostly white background, or as close to white as you can get, is usually the gold standard for a product image. Now, Instagram photos, you can have all sorts of beautiful backgrounds and lots of different things, but we're going to work on getting this white. Because right now we've got kind of like this strange blue shadow over here and we've got some darkness up here and it's really light over here and it's just funky. So we're going to work with what I what is called a mask. The mask is like if you take tape and tape it over something and then you're going to um, paint over everything else and when you peel the tape off, everything that was under the tape remains exactly the same. That's what we're going to do is we're going to put virtual tape over the parts that we don't want to change and then we're going to change the rest of it and see what happens. So we're going to select our yarn and I'm going to try something. I'm going to choose the select subject button up here. Since I've got a white background, it's pretty likely that Photoshop's going to be able to figure out what my subject is. So we're going to click this and see what it comes up with. And look at that, it did a really pretty good job. I'm going to zoom in and get just a little bit more in here. If I want to add to my selection, um, notice how there's a plus sign in my, in my cursor, in my brush right now. I can just go ahead and add more in. Oops, if it got too much, I can either come up here and select the minus, or I can hit the Alt button and it will change it to the minus for me. I'm going to add that back in real quick. Okay, so that's pretty good. We've got some interior space that's also included, but we'll work with that. We're going to click Select and Mask. Okay, so this now shows us what our selection looks like. So we've got some interior stuff in here that I um, that I want to remove. So we're going to grab our quick selection tool or our lasso tool over here. And we want to get rid of this. So we're going to hit Alt to make, change it to a minus. And we're just going to 
hold down our cursor and just kind of drag in here. And highlight stuff that we want to get rid of. We don't have to be perfect yet. So we're going to refine that. All right, so that looks pretty good. We've got a few things that are not quite right, so we're going to go ahead and click on the Refine Edge tool. And that means we're going to let Photoshop kind of make things a little bit better. Since we couldn't get super close, we're going to let Photoshop do a better job for us. So we're just going to kind of go over that edge. Let Photoshop clean it up for us. It's just kind of softening it so it's not quite so harsh. Okay, that looks pretty good. If we needed to, we could adjust the, the radius a little bit so that it, you know, comes in, that the edge comes in a little bit, or we can smooth it out. We can feather it so it kind of softens that edge so it's not quite so harsh. I'm going to go ahead and do that just a little bit. Now we're going to choose our output settings, how we want to, to do this. We're going to go ahead and make this a new layer with a layer mask. And we're going to click OK. All right, so we have masked everything in the background off. The background has been taped. Everything that is black over here has been taped and everything that is white is something that we can adjust. So if we wanted to, we could come up here and adjust our levels again and it will change our yarn. It's not affecting anything in the background. Our little eyeball has been turned off for our background. We're going to turn that back on so that we can see our background. But really, we don't want to change our yarn we want to change the background. So I'm going to click down on our background layer. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these funky colors that I've got going on. So it's a little bit blue here, it's a little bit orange here. We're just going to remove all of the colors from the background so that it is gray and white. So we're going to come down to hue and saturation and we're going to totally desaturate that background so that it's just gray. Took all the color out of it. Okay, so now our new issue is that we've got, it's darker up here and it's lighter down here. How we're gonna adjust that is we are going to copy our layer. So we're gonna make another duplicate. And we're gonna adjust this one so that this is the same as this. So we're going to come to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and we're only watching the top up here. And we're going to brighten that top up so that it's about where we want it. And notice how this is just really blown out now. It looks really unnatural. 
So now we're going to erase the bottom of this layer so that we can see the, the bottom of this layer right here so that it matches again. We I'm going to choose our eraser brush. I'm going to decrease my opacity, that's the see-through quality of it, to about, you know, 50%-ish. And we need to adjust how, how soft the edge of our eraser is. So if you right click and you can adjust the hardness or the softness. So see right here how it kind of fades out on the edges, that's super soft. Right here it has kind of a harsh line, that's hard. So we want a super soft, halfway, opacent, oh, halfway opaque eraser right here. And we're just going to erase the bottom out gently. Until we get how we like it. So I may increase that up again and run across the bottom until it, and you can see, you can now see the checkerboards right here. And that is showing that it's showing through. So that looks pretty good. Not too bad from where we started. Remember, this was our original image. And this one looks pretty good. It's not the best image ever, but it looks pretty good. I think now that I look at it against the white background, I want to go ahead and brighten up our yarn. So I'm going to click on the yarn layer, not on the mask, on the yarn layer. I'm going to brighten these guys up just a little bit. I'm going to pull in my darks. Brighten everything up just a little bit, make those colors pop. That looks good. Excellent. If you'd like to see more if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, go ahead and click the subscribe button. And don't forget to leave me a comment in the comments below on what you would like to see me do in Photoshop or problems that you're having with your product photography that you would like a solution for. And I will do a tutorial for you too. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.